I have before me the new MacBook Pro M1 Max. And in this video, we're gonna go through live video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna see how long it takes to load footage into the computer from an SSD as well as an SD card slot. Basically, is this computer suitable for video editors? Let's get into it right away. The first thing I'm going to do is drag a project onto the desktop from a Samsung T5 SSD. It's a 121 gig project. B-RAW 6K 12 to 1, as well as the Premiere Pro project in it. So let's go ahead and start that out. I'm gonna grab my timer here, and we're gonna see how long that takes. So drag, copy, and start, paste. All right, so as that's rolling, we're gonna talk about the SD card slot transfer speeds. So to transfer a 23 gigs worth of B-RAW footage, from an SD card onto the computer it takes about one minute and 46 seconds. That means that you can transfer one gig per 3.6 seconds. So the transfer speeds are very fast. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is drop frames for multiple frame sizes. Now I'm gonna get into a live video edit here in just a minute, but while we're waiting for this footage to load in, I wanna talk about drop frames for all kinds of different file sizes. Okay, so as you can see coming up on the screen now, the drop frame rates for each of the files. Now we have 4K Fujifilm H.264, 4K Sony A7III-S, we have 4K ProRes out of the Blackmagic Pocket Cam 6K, 6K B-RAW out of the Blackmagic, as well as red footage from a 6K Red Dragon. So as you can see, the file types are handled actually very well on the M1 Max. You can see that the red footage is a little laggy and uh, struggles a little bit, but not as much as some other computers that have been editing red footage. One thing I noticed while editing red footage is you kind of have that glitchy like color fuzz in the background. The graphics processing on these SOC chips is good, but it cannot replicate it super fast in your timeline in Premiere Pro. So it kind of struggles with 6K red footage. Now keep in mind the amount of frames in the projects for the playback test was 16,177. So that's how many frames were dropped out of that total number. Now, as we move on to the export times, these are each nine minute clips loaded into Premiere Pro and then exported out at either 4K full quality or 1080p full quality or set at 4K YouTube and then match source for the 6K. Okay, and so that gives you kind of a perspective on what we're working with as far as the export times are concerned. Now, regarding the fan noise at different export times, I have those results coming up on the screen now as well. So you can see that, oh, looks like we're almost done here. All right, stop. Two minutes and 22 seconds to transfer 120 gigs. That would probably take mm, 15 minutes on my uh, full desktop PC. So two minutes and 22 seconds, that is fantastic. All right, now quickly I'm gonna throw up the thermal results and the fan noise on the screen for the export times, and then we're gonna get into the live playback here of the 6K project. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Premiere profile and we'll see how long it takes to open up. About nine seconds to open up the project file for Premiere Pro. All right, now let's go ahead and drop our B-RAW footage into the timeline here. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick uh, reformat. I'm gonna edit on a 4K timeline, 63. We're gonna change our, we're gonna pull in our LUT. So we have color grading on the project. All right, looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click play right from the beginning here and see how this works. All right, so I click play and it's very responsive. Let's go ahead and scrub through real quick. Scrub, 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 play. It immediately plays again. Now keep in mind, that's on eighth quality. Let's bump it up. Let's go to half quality. Let's see how responsive it is at half quality. Asian culture. Quickly, jumped right in. immediately fires up, no glitch at all. All right, let's go here again, let's jump, scrub, 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 we're now on full quality. And it doesn't even glitch. What right there, it glitched a little bit. It had a little pause before it started. 
but not much. One thing that's really important to consider on these laptops is we are not plugged into power. Okay, this is running off the battery. This type of performance is on battery and the battery life results are coming up on the screen right now. And as you can see, you can get nine hours of battery life editing 4K footage. Basically what I did is I took a 4K project, ran it on loop and the battery lasted nine hours. Absolutely stellar. So not only are you getting great performance, but it's really efficient and you can literally walk around the house editing your footage for nine hours straight. So that's really important to consider when you're thinking about these laptops. You don't have to be plugged into power. All right, now I'm gonna scrub through some motion graphics, which are actually very intense. On my full editing rig, I have a Ryzen 9 3900X with a GTX 1660 Ti. And let's see how the MacBook Pro handles these really heavy graphics that I use in my projects. These are the benchmarks that show up, the motion graphic benchmarks. So let's go ahead and click on one and try and play through. They're pretty laggy still, as you can see, they're loading up pretty slow there. And now they're loaded and we're starting to scrub through them. So it, it is slightly better, I would say, than my editing rig. But as I go and click to a new one, I start to get a little bit of the spinning wheel of death because these are very heavy motion graphics. A computer that handles these with very little issues would be an RTX 3080 and maybe an i7 11800H or a Ryzen 9 5900HS or a Ryzen 7 5800HS. Um, but these graphics, are we're, we're scrubbing through them, but it's not doing it with complete ease. Okay, so I go and I click on this new one, click on it, and it loads up pretty quickly, but it's just not instantaneous. So you see, I get the little spinning wheel of death there for a second as it loads up and then I can click on it. So do note that if you have very heavy motion graphics, you might have a little bit of lag while you're editing them. And that's what I really wanted to bring up here on this review is if you're scrubbing footage and editing footage, you're really not going to have any issues. It's when you get into these really thick, heavy motion graphics, and these are motion graphics built into Premiere Pro, which are a lot thicker and heavier than say After Effects graphics that you bring into the timeline. Uh, when you're doing graphics inside of Premiere Pro, they're a little more bloated. Uh, they, have, they have a lot more information behind them. Uh, there's a lot of bloat in the graphics because they're pre pre-built graphics. So if you're using those types of graphics, you may experience some lagginess. As you saw there, I clicked play and then it started to go and that's on full quality. Let's move down to, uh, let's say like fourth quality and see what happens. Better, definitely better, but let's go and click on one and then move our timeline over. So again, the graphics are very thick, very chunky. And so you can see while editing the timeline, footage is fine, graphics are gonna be a little, a little on the heavy side. All right, let's go ahead and move on over to DaVinci Resolve and uh, see what we can do over there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and launch DaVinci Resolve now. and about four and a half seconds to get to the project menu. And then oh, almost instantaneous to open up the project from there. All right, let's go ahead and load our B-RAW footage. Unfortunately, I don't have motion graphics inside of Resolve. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's one thing I need to say right off the bat. That's one thing I totally dislike about this trackpad. Dragging and dropping objects is awful. Look, I can't even drag and drop it. So I don't know what is going on. Like. Oh, okay, there we go. I got it. But like, it's so inconsistent. It drives me crazy. That is one thing that I really don't like is how inconsistent the dragging and dropping is. It is really frustrating. Okay. All right. So now we're here in DaVinci Resolve. Um, got the project set up and we're going to roll play. Plays without an issue. Pause. Play. Totally smooth timeline. Let's go just down here. It kicks right up. And I'm editing it on a 4K timeline. No, no, sorry, this is a 6K timeline. Forgive me, that's incorrect. So I'm editing on a 6K timeline and it breezes right through. Let's go move, 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 and it starts right up. So DaVinci Resolve editing, 6K B-RAW. Obviously B-RAW is pretty optimized for DaVinci Resolve. I mean, they built it into the player, but let's do a test. Let's go ahead and grab some 4K footage. Uh, right here, we have a Sony A7 III, uh, A7S 
Let's drag this into the timeline if we can. There we go. All right, we got it. We're going to change the timeline settings. Play. Plays quickly without any issues. Let's go drag down the timeline a little bit. Play again. Yeah, really quick, really responsive. Uh, good to go. Now, as far as using this computer for video editing. Now, the next question is, do you really need the M1 Max? What about the M1 Pro? Well, I've done a full video in the same context for the M1 Pro. So you can click or tap the screen up here if you want to check those out. Otherwise, thumbs up if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.